meeting, which kind of has been ignored through all of this, might actually offer some comfort to the markets, whilst, of course, the political machine goes into overdrive now with that you know, campaign in its final throes. Well, we know that uh, the Federal Reserve is very important because Ben Bernanke acts like a put to the market. And really, if we have a look at what's helped to support the U.S. market, we've seen an extremely low U.S. dollar, which has helped to support pretty strong earnings growth in the past. But now what we're seeing is signs that earnings growth is slowing down. And so there are concerns around global growth, which is dominating play at the moment. That's really why this HSBC flash PMI number uh, from China is going to be important today. It will be released at 12.45 p.m. And it's a the first look that we get into the manufacturing space in China for the month of October, there's a view in the market that we have seen growth bottoming out in China in that third quarter at 7.4 percent. But of course, if these numbers do worsen, then we're going to perhaps see a view that uh, we could see things slowing down even further in that fourth quarter. So global growth very firmly in the spotlight in terms of global markets. Overnight, we also saw Moody's downgrading five regions in Spain. And I think the market's getting a little bit jittery that we haven't seen Spain. Spain um, applying for a bailout so that the um, European Central Bank can start on its bond buying spree. We did see uh, Germany's DAX and French CAC sold down very heavily, both down by over 2% overnight. And the FTSE was down by 1.6%. The losses there being led by the miners and really putting that global growth concern uh, back in the spotlight. We saw copper prices at a six week low. We saw gold prices down by 2%. And oil prices down a massive 6.3%. So, no doubt that material space and the energy space on the Australian share market very firmly in the spotlight. On the other hand, we'll also be watching AGMs today, and today sees a couple of important ones, and that's Billabong and Fairfax. The reason why these annual general meetings are going to be important is because of the dismal performance that we've seen from both of these stocks. We've seen Billabong down by a massive 70% over the past year, and we've seen Fairfax down by 60%. So no doubt, a lot of unhappy shareholders at those meetings, and of course, AGMs have been so important uh, to performance this week. We've seen some very very big moves. SMS management yesterday down by more than 23% after comments from its annual general meeting. What if it's actually up by 18% since its AGM on Monday? And we're seeing Treasury Wine Estates down by 10% since its AGM on uh, Monday as well. So we'll be watching those AGMs closely. But as you mentioned, Carson, concerns about global growth and that slowing earnings growth from the U.S. certainly not helping. Peter, if we linger a little bit further on that stock, the, the country risk that that, that company is, is obviously one that you take on at your, you know, I suppose, with eyes wide open. Uh, today, just reaffirming a commitment to Iraq, the Ramila oil field. What about also in South Africa? These are regions that have been notable for, uh, for sovereign risk, really rearing its head. And really, that's the concern with Worley. Yesterday, we saw some mixed comments coming through, and Worley had its annual general meeting. And after comments from its annual general meeting, we saw the stock finishing down by 5.7%. This is another stock that's going to be in focus today, and that's because Worley follows up its AGM with its investor day today. And given some of the comments from yesterday, I think the market's going to be looking for a little bit of clarification. On one hand, we saw Worley Parsons reiterating its full year guidance, and that's for good growth for the full year. But on the other hand, we uh, saw some mixed comments coming through around Outlook. It does look like the first half is going to be flat, and that suggests that earnings will be skewed to the second half. But as you mentioned, Carson, there are signs of weakness in key markets, and that's what the market's really going to be drilling down on today. If we have a look at Worley Parsons as a company, they've got a good track record, a strong balance sheet, and also leverage to that hydrocarbon area but with uh, signs of weakness in some of their key markets the market's going to be uh, going hard on this one and looking at the detail very closely so Wally Parsons it's investor day today watch very closely for uh, some of the comments regarding its business given that we did see a fall of 5.7 percent after its AGM yesterday they continue to be uh, pressing halt coming here for Whitehaven coal um, Nathan Tinkler um, as people would be reading has been threatening to spill the board um, he's got a heap of requests the annual general meetings next week. Um, any thoughts on why this stock might have actually gone into a trading halt though? Um, maybe Julia to you? 
I guess if we have a look at Whitehaven Coal and why it's been in the news today, as you mentioned, Brooke, it is around Nathan Tinkler and his attempt to spill uh, the board of Whitehaven Coal. So no doubt that this trading hold is probably related to some of those media reports circling around uh, this morning. It has been quite a difficult time for coal, but we know that Nathan Tinkler was originally uh, interested in Whitehaven Coal, but of course uh, that takeover didn't occur because of funding concerns there. So I guess uh, because it could lead to some volatility in the share price, we have seen probably the shares going into a trading halt regarding that. And of course it comes at a difficult time. The market doesn't like uncertainty and to see uncertainty in this stock at a time where we are seeing coal prices still relatively under pressure compared to a year ago, uh, it's, it, it doesn't bode well for Whitehaven shareholders in the short term. So watching this stock, uh, lots of media reports around Whitehaven Coal and Nathan Tinkler today and we'll be watching that AGM with interest next week.